Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here. I got a good video for you today, and it's always on a request. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of times I get video requests, and when I get multiple ones, I, I really think about doing them uh, pretty hard. And the uh, video today is gonna be about sleeping in prison. I know it sounds crazy, but I couldn't sleep last night thinking about it. I just got up in the morning, I said, ah, let me do this video on it. Uh, before I get started, please check me on the membership programs and YouTube, Patreon. I thought so much about sleeping because I talk about sleeping. I talked about being with a cellmate, uh, not me, but how would you like to have a cellmate that killed the person? Uh, I know of a guy that actually killed his cellmate while he was sleeping, put a shank through his heart, and fucking went back to sleep. Think about that. The guy was on the top bunk, he fucking stabbed him and went back to bed. So, I mean, you know, I often talked about, you know, when I was in prison, uh, I only slept when the door was locked. Uh, you know, you can go for naps, you can try to do things when you know things are cool, you got friends out there, you know there's no tension on the yard, uh, you could be in your cell, you could lay down, read, and kind of nap if you'd like to, you know, say that. I didn't do it too much in maximum security prisons. Uh, but you, you do do that. You can do that. You have your buddies hang out. And you say, man, I'm going for a nap for a bit, man. Just see you guys later. And they know and they'll leave you alone. And they'll be up on the tier or something like that. And uh, look out for you. You know what I mean? You, you, do be, you become very good friends with certain people. And uh, as a friend, you know, you do look out with, with, with for each other. To this day, my friend Paul and I are good friends on the street as well. We uh, are here in prison. And there's no question I'd look out for Paulie and Paulie would look out for me in the joint. So uh, we did law work together. Obviously, you guys know that. So Paulie and I did a lot of together. Now, getting back to the sleep thing, you know, first of all, every prison has a uh, sleep routine, meaning... Uh, either they have you locked in at 10. When I first went to prison, a few prisons had it at 11. Uh, I, well, by the time I got out, no prison had it past 10 p.m. Uh, now, it's funny because during sports, I was thinking about this just the other day, uh, during sporting events like uh, uh, NBA playoffs or uh, well, Super Bowl ended before 10 o'clock, usually d done by 9.30. Uh, but the playoffs on basketball, something of that, even hockey or or soccer for sure. Uh, they would let let you stay. A memo would come out that says, okay, you know, lockdown is going to be a later time until after the game. Anybody wants to watch it, you have to keep quiet. If the guard hears any kind of ruckus or anything of that nature, they're going to lock the, the prison down again. But people went crazy, and I mean, this is sports. It's all they had. Everybody in that whole prison, that's all you had was sports you got to remember that as well so with that said you had a certain time a night that you went to bed and now you know what happens is you have a cellmate in, in selling now you got to get used to each other's routine you know you might have a celly that gets in there and he, he, he goes straight to bed you know he literally goes to sleep and that's what he wants to do and that's cool uh and then you have other cellies that want to talk a little bit that's cool too. Then you have other cellies who are up all night writing, doing certain things. And, and you got to figure that out. I mean, because you both need, you got to gel some way or the other. Uh, you can't go into the counselor's office and say, well, you know, we have different sleep routines. They're going to say, get the fuck out of here. Who the fuck are you, crazy? Figure it out. The one thing that hurt me in, in prison, I'm not a snorer, uh, but. People who snore, and I mean fucking people who could snore loud, you'd hear them, you'd say, holy fuck, who is that silly? And I mean, I've seen people go crazy because you can't get sleep. You know, you bang the guy, you hit him. I've had snor uh, snorers, uh, but I, I figured out a routine for snorers of me going to bed earlier than them and stuff of that nature. But, you know, when I say sleep in, in prison, you know, and we're going to talk about prison and jails and, and even in transfers. Uh, it, it's amazing what your body can do when you're tired, uh, when you work on actual sleep that you need or not just sleep that you want. It's funny because in today's world now with me, uh, 
I love to be up, I love to work, I love to do videos, I love to research videos, I love to communicate with a lot of people, whether it's on Discord, sometimes you guys see me there at one or two in the morning, and you say, what the fuck? Because my routine is different in, in the streets here than it was in prison. You know, uh, and it also all, all depends too on drugs. Uh, I don't take drugs now, but uh, in prison, when I did acid, I would be up all night. It would be funny. All of us would be up all night. Uh, some of us had a routine on the radio. Some of you guys will remember the show Coast to Coast with Art Bell. Or then it's Coast to Coast with George Norrie. It's an AM radio show. Uh, I used to listen to it. And they had all the crazy shit on it. Conspiracy theories and uh, fucking crazy shit. I mean, you know, the world's ending. Bigfoot. Fucking crazy shit. I used to get a kick out of it. I really did. I got a hell of a kick out of it. Uh, that's where Paul used to get his shit and then fuck with people in prison. And uh, have the whole prison thinking the world's ending. And, and, and crazy shit. But this is all at night for sleep. So, you know, it's early in the morning now. And last night... Believe it or not, this is crazy. I went to bed at 9.45 at night. 9.45, me, 9.45. I always go to bed at 1, 2 in the morning. That's just my routine. And I normally get up around 8, 8.30. Every day, that's my routine. I go to bed around 2 in the morning. I'm getting up at about 8, 8.30, 9. Depending on how late. I've, I've stayed up till 4 in the morning. Uh... I'm just working here in my office. I'm I, I'm looking around now and I'm doing research on videos. I'm uh, looking at other videos, looking at uh, stuff I do, uh, planning stuff for what we're going to be coming up next. And uh, but last night I was so fucking tired. I literally fucking said I'm going to bed. Now I take care of my mom, and uh, my mom's an old elderly woman. And she's worried, are you okay? You know, because she never sees that. And sure enough, I went to bed at 9.45. I got up this morning at 5.30. So here it is now, uh, wow, 7.30 in the morning. And I am like up, raring to go. I said, let me do this video. I just was reading a few emails and a couple of emails were on... Uh, uh, Hey, how did you sleep in there? How did you get by? Now, I've, I've had a few of them. So I said, let me, people must really want to know what it's like to sleep in j jail, prison, and stuff. Now, let me tell you the two differences. There's jail and prison. Now, jail, jail, what people don't understand, jails are usually temporary places people stay. Like, if I had to go back to court, uh, me, Larry Lawton, had to go back to court. They would take me to the area I'm in, and I'd be in a county jail. Most county jails have what they call a federal pod or a, a, a high-end pod, like uh, like where they put felons and murderers and robbers. And I never that's the that's the pods I went to. I didn't go to one some kid with a bunch of little kids who were caught, you know, like fucking uh, doing weed on the street, which. Don't even ask me why they're in prison or jail to begin with, but that's the sad part of it is there are. Uh, but anyway, they would take you to a county jail. Now, county jail sleeping is a whole different different ballgame because it's so noisy. Uh, I mean noisy because these idiots, they're coming in. You got drunks. You got fucking, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, uh, addicts that are coming down off of fucking street highs and having withdrawals and all crazy shit. Now, you have all drugs and all that shit in prison, but you don't see that. You, you People go to bed, it gets real quiet at night. Now, it's funny, you'll hear sounds in nights. You know, you'll hear some crazy shit in prison. You'll hear crying, and you'll hear screaming, and you'll hear, uh, uh, you know, guys breaking down. You'll hear guys having sex. You'll hear a whole bunch of shit in prison going on. Now, in prison prison, there's also the hole, and we'll get into the hole too, because there's that. That's just a whole different, another animal sleep, if there is sleep. So in jail, it, it, it's different, and then you know, in transfer, it's different. You know, I remember, you know, how they do it is, they get you up at one in the morning to transfer. Let's say Larry Lawton's going to uh, another prison or whatever. They wake me up at 12:30 at night. Don't wake me up. I'm really not sleeping it, especially if I know I'm getting transferred. They wake you up at 12.30 and they say, pack up. They come and get you in 20 minutes or whatever it is. You go down and you got to go to a holding cell. And I mean, you just might have been 
up or not up, and it is a process because you got to get on Con Air. That's the plane that transfers you. So you got to go through a whole process. They get the whole prison ready because the marshals are coming to get you at 6 in the morning. Literally, they're going to come strip search you and do their thing at 6 in the morning. Shackle you up, do the whole works. You know how many times I've been transferred so long for hours and hours? I was so tired. Uh, people don't know. You take a, a, a toilet tissue roll. Toilet tissue. That's a hell of a pillow in jail or prison. That's a pillow. Believe it or not, it's a pillow. You know, you lay down on that on the side of your head. It like It's like the perfect height when you're laying on your side to put your head or even on the back of your head so your head is not hitting the concrete and you're just on the concrete. Or as I've slept under the bench. You know, people would sit here on the on the benches, you know, along the wall. I'd go under that fucking bench and you're thinking, oh my God, how disgusting. That's fucking where people's feet and shit, and it is. Trust me, it's fucking disgusting. And I, I laugh at the shit that today people will go to, you know, oh, that's disgusting. Or this, like, in this, and I go, man, what did I do in prison? And I don't mean what did I do. How crazy was it? Uh, the shit you did, the shit you ate, the shit you would, wouldn't think twice today. The, oh, that, you know, I know, you know, the old three-second rule. Something hits the floor, you pick it right up, and you eat it. It's fucking crazy what we used to do in, as far as food. We would put food in our lockers for fucking three, four days. Chicken and food and, and cook food that you know it's going bad. And we'd fucking have it in our locker and fucking throw it in the microwave and fucking eat the shit. I mean, it. I, you know, maybe that's why I don't get food poisoning. Or that's why I don't get usually sick off any kind of food. Because I think my stomach is fucking iron stomach. And I think it has a lot to do with the place I, I, I was at. The prison system I was at. So let me get back to sleeping. So now you have sleep times. Now, again, drugs are one way. I mean, you know, some people did a lot of drugs to go to sleep. You should see they have what they call pill line. So at 8 o'clock at night or 9 o'clock at night, depending on what prison time or whatever it is, they have a pill line, pill call. You know, and, and, and they'll, they'll announce it and you have to have a car and you go out to get your pills. And most of those are psychotropic drugs. Uh, most of those are like Thorazine. You guys ever hear of Thorazine? Thorazine will make you fucking a zombie. You look like you're fucking... You, you know, we used to call guys who get all fucked up on that shit. We used to go, hey, look at him, man. He's doing the Thorazine shuffle. I mean, the guy can barely lift his fucking feet off the ground. That's why they call it the Thorazine shuffle. Well, guys used to take and get certain drugs that they know would help them sleep. You know, anxiety drugs, uh, like a Xanax or fucking shit. That we, man, you'd see the guy like that. You'd see the guy, where, you know, he'd take his pill because they'd take him up at the pill line. And they'd fucking, you'd see the guy at, you know, 930 in, a, in his chair. You know, like, his eyes are rolling back in his head and fuck. Now... Listen, I thought about that. You know, I never took drugs like that. And uh, I said, man, what a way to sleep, though. At least you're going to fucking sleep. But me, I always wanted to have my senses with me. I always wanted to be alert because I, you know, I fucking jump up like it's a, uh, uh, um, it's crazy. People who know me, you know, you go like that to me to sound. I'm up. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to go. Uh. I got a bat, I want to swing it, I'm ready, to, I, it's crazy. Uh, that's why, it, it, you know, I always wondered, I, like, you know, cops come in your house or something, they do that. I could see me getting shot because I would go crazy on these motherfuckers. I would hit them, I'd swing bats, I'd do whatever I had to do. That's just the way I would do it. I mean, I can't help that. I'm not saying good, bad, or indifferent, that's just me. Now, I don't know how your sleep routine is out there, but, uh, you know, a, a good sleep routine is important. To be honest, it's really important. Uh, a lot of people don't have a good sleep routine. I don't. I know that for a fact. Um, and it's uh, it really is crazy because I look at myself and I look at everything I did uh, without sleep. You know, and and I know you need sleep. Believe me, I know you need sleep. I mean, if sometimes I'm working on three hours sleep, two hours sleep, with no sleep. And I'm not talking on drugs. I'm not talking about on, on speed or anything like that. Uh, I'm talking about just 
just me and I, then I get overly tired even now uh, I, I you know what it is and it's kind of weird I could tell you guys this it's kind of like I, I don't want to miss out on things uh, and I know it's weird and I know it's wrong uh, and I, I don't want you to ever think that's the right thing to do it's not sleep is one of the most important things you can do for yourself it keeps you fresh keeps your mind thinking and you know I don't know how any of you guys are as well see this is a true true story in prison uh, listen I'm a dreamer I like to dream and it's not that I could control a dream but if I think about something enough write about it do something I almost dream about it and I don't know if it's subconscious going on or whatever it is I don't know if anybody's out there a doctor who knows anything about dreaming but I can literally have that dream. Obviously, I've had wet dreams. I'm sure most of you young people there have. Uh, and, and they're crazy because, you know, you don't realize it. You get fucking, uh, you know, you, you, you in your underwear, or we did whatever you wore, shorts, underwear, whatever you had. And, and you, you had a, you came in your pants. It, it's just, it's a natural thing. It's like you, you feel like you're there. And that is just, I used to love it, but I used to not only dream about that, and I like dreaming about that, who doesn't? Because you feel like you're there. I hated waking up, oh my God, you woke up and you know you still had an erection. I, I read something where I think a man gets an erection or, or a guy gets an erection like three or four times a night, or maybe more, but it, it's crazy. You don't realize you do. It's just, it's, it's a natural thing that, that, that males have. So, I mean, we would have the dreams, but my dreams also would go from getting out of the prison. Uh, I did, I remember I told people once this before, I was on acid in prison and uh, I, it wasn't a dream, it was a fucking trip. And I floated out of the prison. I literally floated out of that prison. I know, it's crazy, I floated. I was looking down at Atlanta I mean, and the walls and, and, and the buildings, and it was just like so real. To this day, I remember that. And that happened in 19, shit, 1997, 98 maybe, probably 98. So it was crazy that I remember that kind of stuff. And it's just, that stuff, that's the stuff you remember. Um, and that's dreaming in my own way, I think. And I dreamt very well. See, when I slept, in prison I slept now I'm a light sleeper but I slept so I got up always fresh ready to go and it's not like you get up and you're like this morning I got up felt good took a shower I shaved I'm, you know I was up so early I was up at 5 30 this morning I had coffee did this shaved you know did everything I'm, I feel good uh, you, you don't do that in prison. You don't get up taking showers and all that kind of stuff because the showers are closed usually. So you just can't. Uh, sometimes they have one shower open. Depending on the prison you're at, everything is different, obviously. But each prison is different. So now here we are in prison and you're sleeping the way you can, the best way you can, hoping you don't have a snorer with you. Because if you have a snorer with you, holy fuck, what do you do? Kids, that's not like, you know, kicking them out. I mean, I have done things to people to get out of that cell. I had a dirty, scummy kid, and I ended up smashing his face against the wall. I go to the fucking hole. Once I come out of the hole, he was gone. I didn't get that cell back. You, you don't get the cell you went in. It's not like when you go to the hole in prison, you come back and you go to your cell. No. Got to start all over. Got to get a cell, you know. Now, obviously, you're known already in the prison and somewhere already hold. They know you're getting out. Hey, when's Lawton getting out of the hole? Oh, he's going to get out in two days. Oh, you know someone's leaving you. Get your cell. You talk to the counselor. Hey, I'm going to get Lawton with me. He's coming out soon, I heard. Can he go on my cell? The counselors don't give a shit. They want to make things easy. They don't want fights. They don't want crap. Sure, okay, I'm going to assign Lawton to whatever cell it is, you know. Now, usually it's a kite is sent out, or Paulie will hook me up, or somebody who knows each other. We know each other. We hook each other up. And they know, like, I had what they call a bottom bunk pass. That means I had, medically, always a bottom bunk. Just the way it was. I had a bottom bunk because of medical. Now, that doesn't mean I didn't go on a top bunk. 
I didn't mind getting on a top bunk sometimes. Sometimes I liked the top bunk, depending on the setup of the cells, the, the way it was, uh, the ladder they had. Some had no ladders. Now, how the fuck, you know, it's a pain in the ass getting up there. You go off, you know, you go off the, uh, uh, the table or some shit. You get on the table, jump on the table, and then get on the bed. So there's different ways you work that shit out in prison, let me tell you that. But getting back into the sleep mode. So now in county jails, it's harder to sleep. Uh, because there's more, less fucking serious criminals. There's some serious criminals, don't get me wrong, county jail, that's where you start. Uh, but usually there, you, you're going to have a mix of people who are fucking coming down off major drug addiction, so they're having withdrawals, or you get alcoholics. Oh, they're the worst. Some of the alcoholics would smell and fucking, they were the worst. They didn't, they'd shit themselves and... You want to talk county jails, I used to say, get the fuck away from me, man. I'll throw you off this fucking tier. At, at certain points when you're in the county jail, when you know you're going away for a long time, you don't give a fuck. And they know that you don't give a fuck, so they're going to like put you aside. Uh, listen, let that guy go, you know. What the fuck? He ain't bothering anybody. Let him go. He's the feds' problem anyway. Because the feds pay the state or the county to hold those inmates. That's how that works. Uh, and, and as a federal inmate, they knew that, man, these guys are there for serious shit. They're not there for fucking petty crimes. That's just the way it is. So you try to get as much sleep as you can. You always want to be fresh, but the key to sleeping in prison is feeling secure. So I never went to sleep, uh, and I told you, every time I got up in the morning, I put my boots or my shoes on. When that door cracks, I had my boots or my shoes on. I didn't know what's coming. I want to know what's coming. And if it's coming, I want to be ready for it. I don't know who I pissed off the night before. I might not have had any beef with anybody, but somebody just didn't like me for some reason. Happens. It's a crazy place you live. So when you're up, you're up and you're ready to go. Now, even when I napped, I mean, usually, like if you nap, like I said, it's very rare, but you'd lay in your bed, you'd be reading a book. My shoes ain't off. I'm not under the covers and that kind of shit. I'm just waiting there, laying down, I might doze off for a second, and believe me, one thing happened, I'm up. I used to, in Atlanta, we had chairs, actual metal chairs. So you'd put a metal chair right in front of your door. So if the door opened even ahead, he'd hear the metal chair would bang, and then bam, you're out of bed, you're fucking out of bed. I mean, that's exactly how that worked. You know, the door goes out, but if a person walked in, Boom, you'd hear that chair. Uh, I always had shanks all over the place, that kind of stuff as well. I mean, that's just the place I was in. Uh, but sleep didn't come easy. So sleeping in prison is uh, figuring out the best time to sleep, get the right cellmate to sleep. Uh, and then when, and when you have a good cellie, man, that, that makes the whole bit, man, it really does. You, you know, you could play cards, you could fucking uh, talk around bullshit, you can talk about broads, talk about anything. It, it, it was crazy. Uh, listen, the right ones, you can do anything you want. You have a good celly, it makes your whole time go really, really quick. And and that's the key in prison, in my mind, having the right celly. If you don't have the right celly, uh, you're going to have a hard time, and you're going to end up uh, really being a miserable person. You know, I was just watching something, and I'm going to be doing a video on it, uh, but it, it, it talked about how people in prison are like they die 50% quicker than uh, people on the street Which you think Why is that people on the street can get hit by cars can go to plane crash? Or, it's that there's so much shit. There's stress. There's other inmates. There's uh, uh, bad nutrition bad health care There's everything you can do with it. So it does make a lot of sense. So if you can do the right thing with sleep you'll be a pretty good guy. So that's how you sleep in prison. You sleep, how do you say, you sleep very, very cautiously, if that's a, if that, if you can say that. I don't even know if that that's a word, cautiously. I slept when I can, I slept pretty good, I still do, I'm lucky about that. Maybe that's what keeps my health and keeps me, you know, just trying to stay strong, I guess. But anyway, that's all about sleep in prison. Have a great day, everybody. I will see you next time. Please be safe, get some sleep, and do something good for people. Have a great day, everybody.